Morning everybody, good to be with you this morning. Uh, the title of my message this, this morning is Don't Settle for Less. And what I mean by that is don't settle for less than what God has intended for you. Not you selfishly trying to get as much as you can for, for yourself and not bothering about anybody else. It's not, it's not like the, the adverts that say don't settle for less and advertising their their latest expensive product that you, you don't really need and you and you can't you, you can't really afford the the latest must have thing um that 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 costs a fortune. But rather and what what I'm talking about is living the 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 full life, living life to the full, the, the life of love and of joy and peace and happiness and fulfilment that God intends for you to have for you to have, um, and doing doing the exciting, amazing things that God has, put, has planned in advance for you to do, as it says in Ephesians two and verse ten. It is living the abundant life that Jesus talks about in, in, in John chapter 10. But people can have objections to, the, to, to this idea of, of, of living this amazing life in, in, in God. And I'd like to, to sort of highlight this morning, I want to highlight three objections and then give four answers to, to that. So the, 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 the three objections are, first of all, I'm not capable. Secondly, I'm not entitled. And thirdly, it's too much hard work. And in answer to those, I'd like to say it's vision that's important, not ability. It's identity that's important, not achievement. It's desire that's important, not duty. And it's contentment that's important, not strife. So let's look up to um, each of those in turn. First of all, I'm not capable. People, people, people say, I, I, I can't do it. I'm not up to it. Poor little me. I can't do much. I don't have much talent or, or ability that God, God can use. I'm only... You know, I'm only small, I'm insignificant. Well, God actually isn't looking at your ability. He's looking more at your more more at your availability. God doesn't want his pound of flesh from you now that he's saved you, that you've got you've got to do this or you've got to do to do that with for him, or there'll be problems. He's actually looking for a relationship with you, and that isn't dependent on on, on on ability. But important in this, when we say we're not capable, is the vision we have. Because vision sees what is possible. So often we put ourselves down, we, 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 we lower our value. We say we're not up, up to much when in fact we are. And if we could only release those hidden talents and abilities that are within us, we, we, we could achieve achieve great things. And, and vision, vision sees the possibility. It doesn't see the, the, the limit, limitations. It sees what you're really capable of and not the limitations of perceived talent or, or ability. In Proverbs 29 and verse 18, it says that where there is no vision, the people perish or they run amok or they cast off restraint. It's like that with no vision, you, you, you're just running around like a headless chicken. You have no you have no focus. You do any old thing. You, you know no bounds. So, so whether it's good or bad or whatever, you just do do what do whatever you do whatever um jeff has said on more than one occasion recently that your your focus determines your your reality what you focus on will determine what 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 really happens in your life 
Don't focus on your limitations, but focus on your possibilities. Focus on, 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 on the vision that God has given you and work to see that vision come into, into, into reality. We, we, we often in the a, in a, in a morning go up on, on, on the moor just at the back of our, our house with, with the dogs. And on, on a nice day, there's, there's a fantastic view there of, of the whole of the uh, whole of the Air Valley. You can see you can see right into Keithley and well well beyond up the up the, up the valley. Um, but the dogs aren't looking at the view. They're focus all they're focusing on is the smells that are immediately in front of them. We, do we limit ourselves? To what is immediately in front of, in front of us? Do we, do we, or do we have a greater vision? Do we see the whole view of what God really wants to do do in, do in our lives? We need it. We need that vision of what God wants to do in our lives. We're not not just focusing on the immediate limitations that we see we we see see around us. So don't say I'm not capable, because it's not ability that counts, it's a vision of what God wants to do in your life that counts. The second thing we, we might say is that I'm not entitled. It's not allowed, I'm not entitled. And this to do, is to do with identity. In the story of the prodigal son, when he, when he came back to the father, his view was that he wasn't entitled. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son, he said, but can I work as a, a hired servant? I'm not entitled because of what, what I've because what I have what I've done. But the father ignored that. And he says, You're my son. You are entitled to all the benefits of be, being a son. Live your life in full entitlement as a son of the living God. Galatians 5 and verse 1 says that you've been set free. We've been set free. So live as free. Don't go back into the slavery that you've been set free from. Your identity in God is a, is, is a free not as a not as a slave. You're, it's not achievement that counts that makes you entitled. It's not what you've done, not what you've done that you've done this, you've done that, you've done the other. You've got these as qualifications that makes you entitled. It's who you are that counts. It's your your identity. The the prodigal son, what he'd done wasn't great. He'd left his father, he'd squandered his inheritance. But that didn't matter. What the important point was that he was a son. We are sons and daughters of God. And we have that identity. Let's live in that identity. You don't have to do anything to prove your worth. It's not your achievement that, 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 that counts. When Jesus was talking to the, to the Canaanite woman at, at one point, and she was asking to be healed, and he said, he, he said to her, it's not right to give the children's bread to the, to, to the dogs. She replied, um, she replied, but even the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the table. And she received a healing, even though she wasn't part of, uh, uh, of Israel. But we are children. We're not dogs, we're children. We often, but we often, so often have the attitude of dogs. Oh, little me, I'm, I'm just grateful for the, for the few scraps that I, 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 I might I might get I'm I'm not worthy I'm you know I'm very humble I, I'm I need to do my, my penance and my self-sacrifice 
Now, there's nothing wrong with humility and self-sacrifice in, in the right place. But it's not self-denial just for the sake of it, to, to, to sort of show how humble we are. There's a saying into the, the, that we use um, in modern language that every dog has its day. Well, I want more than a day. You know that 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 one little short period of time when things go when things go well. I want to live a life where things go well and things are good, and I believe I can do that with the blessing of God of God on on my life. I want to be feasting daily at His table of provision, feasting on on His on in, on His good on His goodness. Not having a few scraps that are left over from the from, from the from the table. It's who we are. It's our, our identity that's important, not our not our not our achievement, not what we've done. We are entitled because we're children of the living God. The third the third objections people can say, well, it, it's too hard. It's too much hard work. And here I want to talk about the importance of, of desire, because I be really believe that it's desire, not not duty. We, 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 we can talk a lot about um, finding God's will for, for, for our lives. Um, and it, but if we're not careful, that can that can turn into to a duty that becomes a real burden to us instead of something that's liberating and, 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 and sets us sets us free. I believe I believe that desire is based in grace, whereas duty is based in law. Duty might get the job done at the, uh, at the time, but it's 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 going to be desire that that's going to be the real driving force to bring real and, and, uh, and lasting change. You know, the, the, these times um, when we when we were when we were meeting together, there was times on the on a Sunday morning when I get up and not feel particularly like like going going to church. The the, the desire was was lacking a bit, but I'd I'd, I'd go anyway, and uh, so, so so perhaps that that was you could say that that was I was going out of out of duty. The duty. Duty got me there when the immediate desire was waning, waning a bit. But it wasn't the du duty that kept me going week after week after week. It was the real desire to come and to, to, to fellowship, uh, 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 knowing that, 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 that my, my, my church family was there and this was the place where, where, where there was life. There was a, there's a desire there. You know, duty can can perhaps get thing, things done, but it doesn't keep going. It keeps things going. There's got to be there's got to be desi a desire. If you look at your your own family, if you look at fam family life, maybe at times with you with your loved ones, you'll you'll do things out of duty. But if it was only duty, you'd soon give up. The the you you, you serve you sacrifice because there's the a real desire for the for the for the for the best for 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 your own family. Psalm thirty-seven verse four talks about delight and desire. It says, "Delight yourself in God, and He will give you the desires of your heart." God wants to give you your desires. It isn't something he wants to hold. He wants to give you your desires. But if we, if the verse tells us, if we delight in God, we're going to have good desires. And, and the implication from that is that if we, if we delight in the wrong things, then that's going to affect our desires and lead to lead to wrong desire, wrong desires. So the question is, not what what do you ought to do for God. But what do you want to do? What what do you what do what do you feel in your heart that you want to do? Because God wants to bless that desire. Because it's only out of desire that we'll 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 really do anything that, that's significant. Duty might get us so far, but it becomes very burdensome and very wearisome. 
um, desire, we, we, with, with desire, we're prepared to put the effort in. We're prepared to make the sacrifice because we've got the de desire to, to see this thing, this thing through. Many, many Christians think of God in the terms of serving the master. They think of, uh, that they ought to be obeying God and that knowing his will is a matter of finding out what God requires from them. So, so for example, it says in Romans 6 verse 22, now you've been set free from sin. You've become slaves of God. And so often as Christians, we, we, we talk about in, in terms of God being on the throne of, of our life, of him being in control, and we are merely his servants or, or, or his slaves. But actually, Jesus said to his disciples and, and, and to, to us, he says in, in John 15, he says, I no longer call you servants, but friends. We're no longer servants or slaves of the master. But we are friends of Jesus. We're equals with him. In Romans 8 and verse 17, Paul says that we're, we're heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. Co-heirs with Christ. There's an equality there. Yeah, of course we, 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 we want to ser serve Jesus. But he, in the same manner, he wants to serve us or others well. In Ephesians 5, it says that, that Christ loved the church and he gave himself up for her. He, he, he wants to give of himself for us as we want to give of ourselves for, for him. We, we're not just a servant doing the master's, master's bidding, but we're friends in an equal partnership. A, a parent does not dictate to a child what they should, what they should be doing all the time but more they support the child to see their dreams and ambitions realized a parent doesn't or a good parent doesn't choose the child's options at, at school for them or the university course that they're doing or their career path or where they live or or, or who they should marry that's the the child's choice even if they even if they mess it up and God is the same with us. What are your dreams, your ambitions, your desires? God wants to work with you to see them fulfilled. Can, can we put the, the effort in to, to live life to the full in God? It's about desire, not duty. There's a great power in desire that takes us far past the ob far past obligation and duty. A parent will will do anything for their for their child because they love them. They they desire the best for them. A person who has talent practices far beyond what is required, whether it be in in, in sport or art or music or whatever, because they want to do the best. And a student studies long and hard because they, they desire that dream job or university place at the, at, the, uh, at, the end, at, the, at the end of it. Desire takes you far beyond duty. But what about Jesus? What about Jesus? Wasn't it in obedience that he went to the cross? So in Luke 22 and 42, he says, not my will, but yours be done. And in John 5 and verse 30, he says, I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Wasn't it obedience? Well, well, yes, but also it was desire. It was desire as well. He said in Luke 22 and verse 15, what? When he was he was round the table with, with the disciples, he said, I have earnestly desire to eat this Passover with you before he, he went out and he was arrested and then crucified. It was, the whole Passover represented what was going to what was ahead of him, which was going to the cross. And there was a desire there. 
And in Hebrews 12 and verse 22, it says, for the joy, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the, he endured the cross. There was, there was a desire. Jesus had a great desire to secure our salvation. That, that, that our belief was even more powerful than, than the, the duty was there. You know what 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 is the, what is the will of God for for us? Well, Jesus said, "Go into all the world and preach the gospel." In one Thessalonians five and verse eighteen, it says that the will of God is for us to give thanks. Um, in one Peter two and in Ephesians two verse ten, it says the will of God is for us to do good works. And in 2 Peter 3 and verse 9, it says that the will of God is that none should perish, but all should have, have eternal life. That, that these are great big things that our desires and what's on our heart can fit, can fit into. God doesn't want to micromanage us or dictate our every 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 move to us. Rather, he wants to work with us, he wants to work with us to see his kingdom extended, um, but to see our dreams and our ambitions and our desires fulfilled. It's a desire is a far more powerful thing than duty is. But also, also in this, I want to talk about the, the importance of contentment. And contentment rather than strife. Now the, the title of this message is Don't Settle for Less. So if I, in saying be content with, you, with, with what you have, that seems a total contradiction. Don't settle for less, be content with what you have. They contradict one another. But I believe we, have to, we, we need to separate out present contentment and happiness from future ambition that Jesus wants us to live a life that is that is contented and not full of strife I, I, I think he's, he's undoubted in a variety of times he tells us about love and joy and peace and happiness and contentment and fullness of life he says to us why worry and he says to me, come to me when you're weary and know my rest. So actually, a part of not settling for less is not settling for less than a life that is, is full of love and joy and peace, etc. And, it, and living, living more... Living more is more about happiness and fulfilment rather than achieving this, that and the, and the, and the other. And, and while, whilst I, I understand that, that dissatisfaction and, and misery about your circumstances and about your life can be a motivator to move into something better, it actually doesn't always put you in the best place to achieve that, to achieve that change. Does present discontent really lead to, to a, a future drive for change? Or does it actually just put you deeper and deeper into, into a rut? Does being happy with your situation, being content with what you've got, lead to laziness and any activity? Well, laziness actually brings its own dissatisfaction and dis discontent. But rest, on the other hand, can bring bring a clearness of thought and a renewed deter determination. Happiness puts you in a good place to do good things. You know, if you if you just starting out on your career, I remember when I was starting out on on, on my career in my early twenties. You get a job, you enjoy it, you work hard at it. You're happy, you're happy about it. And so out of that, you look for progress. You look for promotion in the future when the, when the, when the time, of time is right. It doesn't bring a, a, a lethargy. 
it doesn't bring a, a, a just a, 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 set, a settling for what you've got. It stimulates you to move on to new things. As a new Christian, new Christians are often excited by the things of God. They're, they've never known a, a happiness and a contentment in the life like it before as, 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 they, as they come into relationship with, with Jesus and Jesus becomes real to them. But it, but that in itself stimulates them to to grow and to and to go and to go deeper. You know, it, it's it's contentment, not strife, that will propel you forward into even greater things, into something new. Is best done from a position of strength and a position of security. Being miserable and down is not a good place to start anything new. If you're in that position, you need, you need some help with where you were where you were at, not to be launching into into a new project. If you've been through a bad experience, you can use it to to relate to to others and to to help others who are going through a similar sort of sort of experience. But really, you can only do that after you've actually come out of the this this this, ex, this experience, not whilst you're in the midst of it yourself, because then you you need support yourself. John John seven and verse thirty eight says, "Out of his heart, Jesus said, said to the people, Out of it, come to me, who all you are thirsty, and out of your heart will flow rivers of living water.'" We minister to others out of the overflow. When we ourselves are, are happy and satisfied and fulfilled in the first place, then we can overflow to others and give give good things to them. So my message this morning is don't settle for less. Don't settle for less than the very best that God has got for you. The best in terms of a joyful, peaceful, happy, fulfilled life. To do that, have vision of the great things that, that you can do in God. Know your identity as the, the most beloved child of the living God. Follow your dreams and your desire. Because God wants to work with you with you in them and be content and fulfilled and thankful of the good things that you already have, using them as a springboard to to move forward into new and into better things. Thank you. God bless you. Speak to you again. Amen.